الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد It's in the human nature that each and every single one of us we try our best to protect ourselves to save ourselves from the greatest and the most difficult calamity that can befall upon us. So by nature, by default, each and every single one of us, we are striving, working hard, spending our you know, free time in not befalling in that difficulty and that calamity. And in reality, if we look at it, it is a calamity, it's a difficulty that if it befalls upon you, if you don't know how to act, if you don't know how to treat it, if you don't know how to take care of it, you can even lose your iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is how great of a tragedy, tragedy and a calamity that is. And it's of the of poverty. Poverty. Each and every single one of us, we are scared of that. And that is what shaitan promises us as well in the Qur'an. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, whenever shaitan wants you to, he wants you to go away from deen, he wants you to sidetrack from deen and from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his greatest excuse to you, to one person, to an, to an individual, is of poverty. Right? That is what he makes you fear the most. Now each and every single one of us by default, we are working hard for what reason? For what purpose? So that we do not have to face poverty in our lives. Each and every single one of us, we strive and we work hard towards it. And in reality, when you look, that in the life of a human, by nature, we go towards things that will make us happy and will please us. That will please us, that will satisfy us. And if we are in a situation where it is not according to our desires, if it is not according to what we want and what we like, we are going to be unhappy. We're not going to like our life. Likewise, this is the same situation and scenario with poverty. That for those people who were connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for those individuals who were connected with Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala, this was the least of their worries. This was the least of their tensions. And for people who are not connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are not connected with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is the greatest of their worries. So hence why we find that each and every single one of us is striving towards that. Towards protecting ourselves from that. Which is a good thing of course. But we, when we give majority of our time to it, when we spend majority of our life to it, then it becomes a problematic issue. Right? When we find in the life of Rasulullah wasallam, when the Prophet wasallam was asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that do you want for me that I make this plan for you, Badha, this place called Badha in the narration that it comes as gold for you, Ya Nabi Allah. So the Prophet wasallam, he said very beautifully that no Ya Allah, no Ya Rabb. Why I would love that I am hungry one day and that I do sabr, I have patience and I remember you, O my Allah. And that the next day, the following day, you give me something to eat and I thank you, O my Rabb. So when, when does poverty become, or sorry, when does this become a great issue in our lives? Right? When we work so hard after, when we go so after the dunya, the world, it becomes a problematic issue when we strive and we put our entire energy towards it. And when we speak about poverty, generally the only thing that comes into our mind is what? Is that of hunger and thirst. And in reality, that is the greatest difficulty that can befall upon a person, is of hunger and thirst. Because you can have patience upon any other calamity and difficulty. But when it comes to hunger and thirst, when it comes to hunger, and you being hungry, or your children being hungry, or your family being hungry, and them being thirsty, this is something that one cannot bear. Right? That's why in the Quran, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the people of Jahannam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and the only reason why I'm bringing this up, this issue of, you know, filling our stomachs to the fullest, 
And in narration, Aisha radiallahu anha, she says, in one narration, she says that the greatest difficulty and the calamity that can befall upon the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and that will befall upon the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after the demise of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in, in, in Arabic, it's known as a shibu, which is which means to, to, to be very full, to be satiated, right? To be so full that you do not have the ability to move around. Right? So Aisha radiallahu anha she says that the greatest diffi- that the greatest musibah, that the greatest calamity that will be found upon the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is of is, is being so full, is being full. And when we know that when, you're, when a person is full, majority of the sins that are carried out from a person is when you are full. Right? When you are hungry, you don't even think about committing sins. So when we fill ourselves to the fullest, then and only then our mind starts to work around, okay, what's the next thing I can do to violate the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Aisha radiallahu anha, she says in that hadith that the greatest calamity that is going to befall upon the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is filling yourself to the fullest. And then she says when the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will start to do that. In the hadith she says, three things will happen. Three things will happen. Number one, saminat abadanuhum. They will look heavy. Their bellies will start to f- come out. Saminat abadanuhum. Their bellies will be overflow right come out you cannot you can't move around you got to carry your belly around first right you got to put your belly into the door first and then yourself after saminat abadanuhum their bellies will become you know their bodies will become full their bodies will become overloaded number 1 number 2 fa tasa'abat qulubuhum tasa'abat qulubuhum their hearts will become weak and when your heart becomes weak nothing good can penetrate through it now all you think and all you do is sins and all you commit is sins and number three, she, 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 she said, وَجَمَحَتْ شَهَوَاتُهُمْ جَمَحَتْ شَهَوَاتُهُمْ Their desires will grow wild. Their desires will grow wild. Hence why we find that the greatest issue in behind committing a sin and the greatest issue, the greatest reason why a person commits a sin, it's because the belly is full. When the belly is full, you move forward. You go ahead and you think of different, different ways to violate the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this calamity that we try to protect ourselves, of, ourselves from so much and we try our hardest and we try our most to protect ourselves from. Well in reality this is not something to, so bad in, in Islam. It is not something looked down upon in Islam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as I was mentioning the hadith where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that valley to be turned into gold for him. What did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? If he wanted it could have been turned gold for him. But the Prophet ﷺ said, I would like that what? One day I am hungry and I do sabr. And the next day I am full and I'm, uh, and I'm eating and I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we talk about ourselves, when we speak about ourselves, in getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the very first thing that we should try to avoid and we should try to try our best to accomplish is try not to fill yourself to the fullest. Right. Whenever you eat, eat in a way, eat in a moderate way. Because once you do that, all the actions afterwards, you will be you know, energetic after. Sometimes we eat so much and we keep eating and eating and eating, we become so lazy, we don't even fulfill the fara'il that we're supposed to be fulfilling. Right? Unfortunately. That's when one hadith, the Prophet wasallam, and in the life of Rasulullah wasallam, as I said, this was the least of their worries. Right? Poverty and things like that were the least of their worries. Because they were connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They knew that this condition, if it befalls upon me, is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going to be happy with it. I'm going to be content with it. And what did we learn in the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? In the narration it comes, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once he left his house in the night, in the late hours of the night. This hadith is mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim. In the late hours of the night, he left his house. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he leaves his house, he sees Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu anhum as well. He sees both of these companions. So he looks at them and he says, مَا أَخْرَجَكُمَا مِن بُيُوتِكُمَا فِي هَذِهِ السَّاعَةِ Abu Bakr and Umar, what made you come out at this late in the night? What made you come out at this time in the night? Right? What made you leave your houses in this time in the night? مَا أَخْرَجَكُمَا مِن بُيُوتِكُمَا فِي هَذِهِ السَّاعَةِ So they looked at the Prophet ﷺ and they said, يَا, يا نَبِيَ اللَّهِ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ الْجُوعُ 
Ya Nabi Allah, we're so hungry, there's nothing at home that we can eat. So because of that, we couldn't bear the hunger, we left our houses, Ya Nabi Allah. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, What walladhi nafsi bi yadihi? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I swear, to, I swear by the one in whose hand my life lies. The same situation, the same reason why you left your house, I've left my house the same reason. I left my house with the same reason. Then they go around and they find an Ansari, a, a, a companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they go to his house. The wife of that companion, she was home. The husband was out. She welcomes the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and these two companions. They come and they sit down. And she prepares a meal for them. They eat. And the, when the man comes, to, uh, when, when the husband comes to the house, he slaughters a goat for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and for his companions. They eat that. And then towards the end, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said something very beautiful. The Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that you see this ni'mah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that you just had. You filled yourself to the fullest. Allah Ta'ala will ask you on the day of Qiyamah about it. Let us alunnif. عن هذه النعيم. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will definitely question you about these nirmas of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on the day of Qiyamah. That you left your houses in a situation where you were totally hungry, and now that you are coming back to your houses, to your abodes, you are full. Allah Allah Taala will ask you about it on the day of Qiyamah. Right. So these were situations and scenarios that fell upon the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam himself, as we heard in the lectures before. That Aisha radiallahu anha says a whole month will pass by and nothing, the stove wouldn't lit in the, in the, in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa right? But what did that do to them? As they said, right, that the hunger that a person feels, and if you can overcome it, if you can overpower it, anything after that you can overpower, mentally and physically. If you can overpower your hunger and thirst, you can overpower anything. You can overcome anything. And then at that point is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up the doors of Hidayah and the doors of Noor for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving all of us the ability that this uh, uh, situation we are in, right, where our nafs, it, it wants us to feed, it, to feed it more and more and more. And that is only when we eat and eat and eat and when we feed ourselves more and more and more we become lazy. We don't get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the main core reason why. So what do we learn from this? Is that we have to protect ourselves. We shouldn't eat. As they say, right, in one narration that it comes, to eat to your fullest, it's better if a person feeds a dog that meal. To eat to your fullest. So we should refrain from it in order for us to get connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we want that we, we are spiritually strong, we have to protect ourselves from this issue. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us the ability to do so, inshallah.